Hello. Today I'm going to work you through the features of ICHR. So we'll start from the dashboard. So at the moment I am logged in as an admin. So when I log in as an admin, I can see the dashboard like this. I can see the most important modules on my dashboard, which is for the management of the employees, management of the company structures, managing the users, projects, attendance, leave, reports, settings, supplicants. This is related to the recruitment and we can see the active jobs which is also related to the recruitment, training setup, travel, documents, expenses, functions, upgrade. This is only for the cloud installations and you can upgrade and view your invoices here. And the last one is the HR form. So if we start from the company structure, the first step to build your ICHRM installation is defining the structure of your company. So here you can add various company structures that could be your own company or a branch, a department according to your company structure if you want to break it down into, into smaller departments that is possible here. It's up to you to decide how it should look like. And also the most important thing is that you have to define the company structure here if you want to attach your employees to those company structures. Then uh, when you define the company structure, you can see it on a graph like this. And uh, also one important thing is that when you are adding a company structure, you should give a time zone as well because this will be used for attendance of your employees. Right. And then the job details, it's the, it's the normal HR activities like creating and defining the job roles, the pay grades, the employment start statuses, which can be later assigned to your employees. Then the qualification, it's same, the various types of skills, the education qualifications, the certifications your employees have, and the languages. So when you are assigning the languages, you can assign the language in in four different skill levels. You will see that at a later time. And you have a training setup. You can define various types of courses that your company is offering. And uh, yeah, you can assign a internal employee as the coordinator for the course, or also you can name an external trainer. It's a free text field. You can type anything. And then when you have the courses, you need to define training sessions which your employees can attend to. So a training session has a scheduled date and it has an assignment due date. And also you can add some details about the course and you can also say give a name. You can give a delivery location where the course will happen. And uh, you can select the delivery method whether it's online, self-study and also, this attendance type is to say whether, whether you are going to assign it to your employees or whether your employees can look at the list of training sessions and uh, subscribe to the training session. Also, you can add an additional attachment here. And then the, the last field is to mark whether a training certificate or is required or not. So when your employees completed the training session, they can, they can submit the training certificate and their supervisor can approve whether they have completed the training properly or not. And here there's a, there's a way to view all your employee training sessions. This will, this will show you the whole list. So if you want more, maybe I can log out and log in as an employee and then I can sign up to this training session. See that? Uh, I'm going to sign out as an admin and then I'm going to log in as uh, maybe a user. Okay. Yes. So now, for the users, they can go to training manage. So it's training management, and then they don't have any training sessions assigned to them because that's the reason the my training sessions is empty. Then you can go to the all training sessions and see the one that I just defined. You can see the details of the training session, and then they can sign up all right so when they sign up they can see the uh, training session here so the employee goes to the training session imagine that they completed it then they can mark it as completed 
So before that, they have to attach the group of completion. As I selected it, that is necessary. So I'm just going to uh, select some some file, attach it, save it. Then I can complete the training session. So let's look who's the manager for this employee, so that I can approve it. I think I'm not the manager, so I'm going to log in as the manager. Let's check training, training. So the manager dashboard has some more features than a regular user. Then they can go to the training and then they can view all the training sessions. Okay, so my direct report has marked the training session as they have attended it. I can go and view the training session. I can see the attachment. And okay, it seems fine. Then I'm going to say that it's completed. So when you when your direct report submitted a training session to be approved, you will see a notification here. Now I'm going to log out and log in back as an admin. As the admin can see the training sessions of all the employees, I will show you where you can see it. So you can see everything. And uh, now let's move on to the next one, the project client setup. The, the setup is like for the defined clients and the projects we are only using it for the timesheets. So you can have various clients and then you can have projects assigned to these clients. Just the project name and some details. And then the list of employee projects here, you can assign these projects to the employees. So I'll show you why you need this when we are uh, going into the timesheets actually. Uh, then the leave management, leave management is, it's a, it's a, it has a lot of configurations. So I think uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go through the configurations, but it's always better to read our documentation. It's, it's really detailed, and you can see that uh, under this section we implement a sample leave policy for a company based in Germany and Singapore. It covers the leave groups and. Uh, uh, all types of configurations with examples and yeah it's a long one but uh, you need to go through it if you really want to use the ICHR and leave management module effectively so, so for an example you can define leave types and then one important thing is that you need to have leave period leave period you have started and ended and all the leaves that you are defining uh, all the leaves that your employees are applying will be attached to this leave period if it is done through 2018 so I'm defining the annual leaves you have a way to define the work week and the work week is also configurable let's say you have a company in two different countries and uh, for a fact i know that uh, in, in in middle eastern countries the friday is a holiday and also thursday may be a holiday and sunday is a working day so for an example if you select uh, friday you can mark it as a working day for maybe Saudi Arabia right so yeah then you can mark holidays one thing to notice is that uh, the last holidays in 2015 you have to add the holidays for every year that's a one-time thing that you have to do at the beginning of each year the new rules will all write the what defined under the uh, new types it can target a uh, job title and employment status or an, or an employee directly uh, you can find more details about leave rules under our documentation. The free time off is used to uh, allocate leaves for the employees. Uh, maybe random leaves like some employee worked on a holiday and then you want to uh, compensate that leave by a leave and then you can add a leave for one of your employees. And also you can deduct employee leaves here. For an example, when you start setting up ICHRM leave management module, if uh, an employee has already applied for some leave days then you can add it here as a negative leave balance just remember you can have partial uh, leave amounts as well here 
three groups that is covered in the recommendation so it's too lengthy to uh, describe here and you can fill the whole list of your employee leaves so as i went through the uh, leave settings i'll just show you how a leave can be applied uh, this section can be seen by every employee so maybe it would make more sense if, he, if i log out and drop in as another employee a regular one um, Okay, so here the employee can see a uh, leave section for the leave management. They can see their leave entitlement, available leave seven, and then there's uh, some demo leaves. So, um, okay, so I'll go to all my leaves and I'm going to apply for a, okay, I can only apply for a medical leave. It's uh, because I've been using this for some testing. I'm going to apply it on May 23rd. May 23rd. Maybe you can also attach a file. Continue. Select the full day, half day, or whatever settings that you want. Just go and apply. Then it will be approved by your supervisor. So when you apply for a leave, your supervisor will get a notification and then they can approve it. Let's see that. So here you can see that your direct report has applied for a deal. Now you are the manager. You can go to the deal module. See that approved deal. Mark that one here. It is. Can view the details. You can view the attachment as well. And uh, then you can go and approve it. Okay. Um, now the I've been also able to do all these details because under the new settings, which is only accessible by the admin, you can see the complete employee new list. Uh, yeah. So all the notes and everything. Okay, it's not that. Uh, the second one, yes. So it was approved by. The manager okay also you can see the attachment here now uh, moving on to the expense administration for the expenses you can define various categories mm. yeah the expense categories and you can define payment methods and then you can see all the employee expenses that are submitted so uh, your employees can submit expenses it's like the uh, If you're an employee, you can go to the finance section, go to the expenses, and submit an expense. Select that. The transaction reference. So the currency, uh, you can set a default currency under the settings, so you don't have to select the currency all the time, go through the whole list. And uh, yeah, you can upload your receipt and everything, and then save it, notes. So when you submit it, it'll go to your manager, and the manager can uh, approve your expense. So it's like that. And uh, actually the Expense management is a part of uh, the the approval flow. There's a way for you to uh, select what kind of approval flow will be done for the expense approval. So the simple way is that your employee apply for the expense. It goes to the manager. Manager approves it, and everything is done. Or you can assign several approvals to your employee, and when the employee apply for the uh, apply for the deal it will go to the to the first uh, first it will go to the supervisor then that approval request will go to the, uh, the first approval and then this first approval approves it goes to the second as and then you can assign a third approval as well and then finally when all the approvals approved it that's uh, completely approved so it's a long process and here you can assign various approvals this employee has only one approval 
uh, the the section is kind of like very well described here on the expense management so this approval process uh, can be uh, done for the expenses the due and also for travel requests as well also we have an overtime module that also supported by the approval flow now um, going back to the uh, uh, the admin list we have overtime requests your employees can if they are willing to work overtime requests they can uh, request for overtime and then your manager can approve it or if your employees have worked overtime they can request that and then your man then the manager of the employee knows that they have worked overtime and then they can approve it so these both the expenses and the overtime can be passed onto the payroll so under the payroll you can uh, add the expenses done by the employee to their salary and also you can uh, add additional salary components based on the overtime approved overtime hours so now the we have a section for company loans it's just uh, Small section you define the loan types and then the employees can apply for loans. Mm, you have an audit log, it records everything done uh, on the system. So, for an example, that you can see that how I have applied for a leave under this employee, and then, yeah, so all the uh, authentication and uh, other types of user actions will be recorded under the audit log. So, moving to the next section, you can see the list of employees under the employee section of ICHRM and then uh, there are several tabs at the top where you can see the skills, education, certifications, languages and this is for all the employees but if you want to go into one particular employee click here you can go in then when you select the qualifications tab you will see the qualifications the skills, education, certifications for only for this employee so here you can add the languages this employee knows and uh, you can upload profile images and all these things so also you can see the documents for this employee uh, yeah so and the employees you can add various custom fields to the employees as well here you can see that employee custom fields you can go into the employee custom fields I have already added two custom fields and uh, you can see these custom fields under the employee when you go and edit an employee when you are adding a custom field you can add various types of field types like the uh, file uploads or even select boxes and multiple select boxes okay then you can view the employee history mm. as you can see the all the changes start to be uh, uh, the employee fields will be displayed here you can see who has done it the username and the date so for the document management uh, it can be used to uh, upload uh, company documents as well as the documents attached to the employees so for the company documents you can create company documents like one some details you can upload the document You can decide to share the document with the uh, departments if you don't want to share it just leave it as it is and then you can share the document with individual employees so only these employees will be able to see this company document and if you want to share it with all departments select all departments if you want to select it, just a particular department or multiple departments just select it as it is so all the employees under these departments will be able to view this uh, document also if also these employees as well right and uh, here you can define various document types that can be uploaded by your employees it's just for your reference so it will make it easy for you to sort out all the documents uploaded to the system and uh, then you can have employee documents so one one more feature is that uh, you can attach a document you can mark it mark until when this document is valid so for an example this is the document type and when you go into the document type you can uh, mention that whether you need to send a expiry notification so also you have three fields whether you need to send an expiration notification before one month one week and one day so your employees will automatically will be getting an email when the document is about to expire 